This was one that jumped off the page at me. Leicester versus Fulham. Leicester plus 120. Fulham plus 215. Fulham come back. Six points out of six. Back to back. Beat Southampton. Beat Palace, even though Palace didn't turn up. The draws at plus 265. The under over set at two and a half, with the over being at minus 130. Stinch, I am just went Leicester. I was more than happy. I was going to make it my banker, but I thought, no. Every time I bet Leicester, they let me down. Yeah, I couldn't trust Leicester right now. Uh, James Madison, I'm not sure he'll be available for this evening if he is. I'd be surprised if he starts. Pats and Dacca's out injured as well. They've got a couple of other players missing. And you're come, uh, coming up against a Fulham team that seem to don't care who they're up against. They will go, come out and they seem to be scoring goals nearly nearly every game. So for me, I, I, not, when I entered this match, I was thinking um, I want to back over two and a half goals. But you can already see there, minus 130. So that puts me off when I know, you know, I can get over two and a half. In other games that I'm, I'm just as, as almost as confident about nearer, nearer to even. So that's what sort of put me off there. Um, but yeah, I don't think you can trust this Leicester team um, one bit right now. They looked very uh, ordinary uh, against Newcastle Boxing Day. Then they went to Liverpool and they took the lead. And but then by half time they were already behind again. So. I'll probably want to side with Fulham at the prices, although having said that, Fulham defensively, you can always get them. So, yeah, I think if you want to maybe stick with goals, probably backing over two and a half, and both teams to score would be the, the way to go to get you up to close to that even money price. It's just I'm not sure I can trust Leicester right now. They look very, very ordinary post-World Cup, and uh, maybe Brendan Rodgers is another manager that's under pressure. Yeah, so he should be. Uh, Marco here, I look at this and go, OK, Fulham beat a Palace side and Palace didn't turn up. Palace went down to nine men. But let's not take anything away from Fulham. Uh, Fulham then beat a Southampton side who are below below average. Um, Leicester didn't turn up at home against Newcastle. Then they go to Liverpool, go one up, and but they've gone one nil up against so many sides on the road. I think plus 120. I've got to take it. I've got to take it because I look back and I see Leicester win this game 2 0, 2 1, and I've got a really good price. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be back in Leicester at the prices. I, I don't know what you're saying on Fulham. Um, you know, the, the game against Palace, you can almost kind of just ignore it because of the, the, the red cards. And against Southampton, they weren't massively convincing. You could probably say they were second best actually at the cottage uh, and probably fortunate to win that match. But um, I just think there's a, a confidence about them, um, which, you know, is dangerous. And yeah. there isn't that confidence about Leicester right now. And I look at that that team. I know they've improved their defensive game in the last couple of months. But you look at the, the back four on paper individually and, and even collectively, and it just doesn't fill you with confidence whatsoever. So a Fulham team who are, you know, absolutely just loving life at the minute, the six top goal scorers in the Premier League, only failed to score twice. Can they trouble them? They absolutely can, I believe. So I can see Fulham scoring in this game and then you need Leicester to score at least twice to win the game. And, you know, I'd be expecting goals in this match for sure. Fulham are the goal kings in the Premier League so far this season. We've talked about it week on week, really. And that's probably where I would head if I was getting involved in this game. It's plus 105 for over two and a half goals and BTTS um, brings in the, the Leicester, to, Leicester to win 2-1, for example. If if you do fancy the Foxes, um, Fulham have seen overs in 15 of 17, BTTS in, in 13 of 17. Uh, they're scoring goals, but they're conceding chances for fun as well. Um, but I'd also mention uh, Alexander Mitrovic, who, who missed that penalty against Southampton. Um, he scored in nine of his 14 starts. He's got 10 goals overall in the Premier League. We know he's on on spot kick duty already. That's not going to change regardless of what happened. And he's had two shots on target in eight of his 14 starts and averaging uh, 0.41 non-penalty expected goals per game, which is a, an incredible figure for a newly promoted team. Uh, he's plus 150 to score at any time. Uh, if Fulham are going to score or score multiple goals here, you'd imagine he'll be absolutely central to that. And um, yeah, I just haven't got enough faith or confidence in that Leicester defence right now, regardless of their improvements. Uh, and obviously key injuries in, in forward areas could have flicked them too here. So um, I'd be more pro Fulham than Leicester, but um, I think goals would be the more sensible approach. Yeah, come on, Leicester. Let's, uh, you've just got to put up because uh, obviously under so much pressure, but I, I just think Fulham have got away with absolute murder. They score goals, but Leicester were, they were uh, keeping uh, the back door a little bit clo bit closer to being closed, uh, but they've not started the uh the last two games, really. Um, I'm going with Leicester. Leicester plus 120. Let's have a little look at the official picks. Leicester at home at plus money against the Fulham side, who must be pinching themselves. Uh, I just can't. I just 
cannot pass it up. Uh, money line plus one twenty. Um, and if they get B and Rogers gets the old tin tack, which is another word for sack, then I suppose uh, I'll be quite happy with that as well. No one's wishing it on him because obviously I want Leicester to win. But. <laughs> 